New Mexico is a land of stories, myths, and legends. The unexplained and the unexplored. I'm Chad Brummett, and we are exploring the unique and unusual world of New Mexico Strange. Hello, and thank you for joining us on this inaugural episode of New Mexico Strange. I'm Chad Brummett, and so glad that you are joining us for this. Uh, So this is a new show that we're going to be doing here at KRQE, exploring all sorts of different stories. Obviously, New Mexico is ripe with UFOs, ghosts, chupacabra, whatever you want to think. There are some great stories that may be hiding under the covers, and this is the show that is going to unpack them. Uh, So with this first show, I thought that I would start with uh, two very good friends and two people that I think are experts in the field of the paranormal, Uh, two guys that I absolutely love reading, watching on documentaries, hearing stories about. First up, uh, Mr. Ben Radford, who is an author, who is a podcaster, Squaring the Strange, Uh, and you have also appeared, you may think, this guy looks kind of familiar, you've probably seen him on some National Geographic documentaries, History Channel, Uh, so Ben, thanks for being here. Uh, Sitting next to him, Mr. Cody Polston, who has the coolest hat in the building, Uh, also an author, a ghost tour uh, host, investigator, uh, and uh, I, I couldn't think of anyone else to do this inaugural show with, so guys, thanks for being with us. Um, I want to start before we dive into today's topic, uh, finding out how you guys got into this. And Cody, we'll start with you. How did you get into ghost investigation, paranormal investigation? What what brought you into this world? It was, I was young. I was like eight years old. And my brother and I were sent to a place called Camp Christmas Street. So it's a day camp, like a 30 minute drive out of Amarillo, you know. And uh, on the way to the day camp, we always pass this old house. And it's just like curiosity. Well, there's one time of the year where we're allowed to stay overnight. So the older group of kids, which I was in, they were going to take us to go see the haunted house, right? So uh, we got on the bus, went, there were like six counselors. We got off the bus and they're leading us up this arroyo and we come across this cow that's been massacred. I mean, pieces of the cow were missing. So the counselor's like, so they direct the kids around. And I noticed even as a kid that some of them were like concerned. I know two of them left and they were talking something about a sheriff, probably to go get that person. Anyway, they went in and took us to the house anyway, took us upstairs, and they started telling us ghost stories. And what I remember as a child is a door opened, and I saw a counselor shut it, and then the door opened again. And the next thing, all these kids are screaming, and I'm in the middle of them, and they're rushing us out of the building, and then they're frantically counting the kids. Well, I'm watching the front door, and there's a window next to it, and it parts. And this big bushy bearded guy looks out and what the heck anyway so they take us back we're all locked up in a building with with you know the 22 rifles that they would teach us to shoot with yeah. it's texas <laughs> and so you know i remember the cops showing up and then after that it was like did they catch the guy that hurt the cow you know what happened my parents were like now nah, you don't need to worry about that don't, don't worry about it same thing with the counselors they wouldn't tell it to me so I got, first of all, interested in horror movies like Dracula, Wolfman, you know, sure. the old Universal films. Oh, yeah, my favorites. And then I also became really fascinated with, like, Sherlock Holmes, Nancy Drew, the Hardy Boys. And you take those two things and you mix them up, and that's how I got into it. I, that's how my interest started. Yeah, so. okay. Okay, Ben, how about you? How did you get into this? That's creepy, man. How <laughs> <laughs> about that? Uh, yeah, it's, um, um, you know, I grew up in Corrales, uh, and uh, I remember kicking around, uh, I, when I, I would go to the local used bookstore, I'm always a big reader, writer, and this and that, and so I remember I would uh, take my allowance, five crumpled dollar bills, and walk over to, across the, there was a used bookstore across from Corrales Elementary where I went, and I would see all these books, like, you know, weirder than science, and crazy things, and just sort of these 1950s, 60s, you know, pulp, you know, terrifying UFOs, lake monsters, whatever else. And I'd buy these books. I'm like, this is so cool. So I'd, I'd, you know, I'd, I'd take them back and I'd just spend summers reading and reading all these books. I'm like, oh, this is so crazy. But like there was, I, it, I sort of got disillusioned because there were all these amazing, weird, wild, sensational stories, but they, they were nothing like, I was just a kid in Corrales living on dirt road, and there was all the all the exotic mysteries seemed to be far away. There was the Loch Ness monster in Scotland. There was you know allegedly monsters in dungeons in in London, wherever else, or UFOs or else. 
And so I was like, well, this isn't really fair. I don't have anything cool. <laughs> and then, um, and then I would walk on the ditches in, in Corrales and, uh, and I would hear stories of La Llorona. Uh, and, and, you know, a lot of my Spanish speaking, uh, friends who I grew up with, you're like, oh yeah, this is, this is real. I'm like, it's real. It's like, yeah, there's, so there's this legend about this, this woman I wrote about in one of my books who you can hear her wailing on, you know, moonless nights or full moon nights, take your pick, uh, f- crying for children that either she drowned or other people drowned, depending on the st- story of the tale. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh my God, this, this. This is like it happening in my backyard. And then I, I later on, um, when I was uh, in, in high school and college going to UNM, I uh, took a job as a bus boy at the Rancho de Corrales, uh, uh-huh. formerly known as the Territorial House, uh, an old adobe house uh, allegedly haunted. And so I spent time there and I would talk to Mr. Jaramillo, Mr. J, and I would ask him, is there a ghost here? And he was sort of, he was sort of weak at me. I'm like, that's not an answer, dude. <laughs> uh-huh. Anyway, so that's sort of what, what got me into it. And and uh, as I sort of became more of an adult, I, I realized that a lot of the these really dramatic stories I was reading about and I was seeing on Unsolved Mysteries and That's Incredible and all these things mm-hmm. is that there was, there, there were a lot of wild stories, but there was very little actual investigation. Right. And I was like, these are really fascinating. Talk ghosts and UFOs and monsters and stuff. I'm like, if these things are real, I want I want someone to like, Go there. Don't just say like it is said that, right? Or somebody said like, no. It, I want to know the truth to it. So I, that sort of launched me into it. Really? Okay. So today we're we're literally and figuratively taking a page out of your book, Cody. This <laughs> right. this book, yeah, Ghosts of Old Town <laughs> Albuquerque, um, and we're going to focus on three specific stories. But you know, I know that Cody and I, you and I had, had spoken before this, and I said, you know, what stories do we want to pull? Because there were so many of yeah. them in Old There's Town. There's a lot. There are a lot of different ghost stories. Um, you know, obviously, this is one of the oldest, you know, neighborhoods in, in Albuquerque. In the state, really. In the state, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know. So is, is that why there are so many ghost stories that kind of persist in Old Town? It's just because it it's old? Or is was it a violent area? Would, would, why, why so many of these stories there? Well, um, a lot of it is the history. So our, our history has been sanitized. My next book that I have coming out is the unsanitized version. Okay. Um, our red light in Old Town was nuts. You think of Dodge City and Tombstone. Mm-hmm. That is nothing compared to what Albuquerque was. Really? But it's not talked about anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know that parking lot on south side of Old Town, the big parking lot by the Botker Mansion? Mm-hmm. There were speakeasies there. We had 23 of them that ran open through Prohibition. And uh, the fact there were claims that the local... Marshall was kind of like just turning his nose to it, like he was on the take, you know. Um, and so it's just that. There's a lot of violence, a lot of that kind of stuff. But I think there's also uh, the cultural influence of storytelling from different cultures coming together. And everybody likes a good ghost story, you know, is entertainment. We all do. That's why the horror movies are popular. And we got Ozzy Osbourne and Rob Zombie and Alice Cooper, you know, yeah. that macabre element fascinates people. Yeah, obviously. So yeah, the combination of all of that. And if if you've never been in Old Town Albuquerque after dark, that that really also adds to it. Just the 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 ambiance and the low lit ambiance and the old buildings and the old architecture. Even if you don't know the stories, I think that you can potentially <laughs> fabricate some in your own mind. Plus, we've had the ghost tour there for what what twenty five years yeah. now. So, which the honestly, stories are being talked about? If if you if you have never done the the ghost tour or the, the the walking history tour of Old Town, it is so worth it because it's just fascinating to find out all these stories and in the, the history behind it. Um, so so let's dive in. Actually, the the first, and I know that in in this book you said for a while uh, that that it was the first stop on the ghost tour, and that's the La Placita restaurant. Um, Tell me a little bit about uh, what what you guys know about La Placita, some of the stories behind it, some of the history behind it, and we can unpack some of the the ghost stories that that supposedly exist in that building. So this one's kind of fun. I've done a little bit of research. I found the oldest ghost story that I found was told by a guy named Howard Bryan. He was a reporter for the Albuquerque Tribune, and this was 1977. So he was going there for an art uh, exhibition kind of a thing and ran into them talking about the ghost. So, according to the article, it was Victoriana Armijo, who had died of the plague, and they hear her voice, like, calling employees. 
And other than that, it was silverware was being messed with on the table. So that's okay. the oldest I could find. But that differs from the modern ghost story. The modern ghost stories, there's three ghosts. Okay. You got a little girl, a guy named George, who is the one calling the names. And then, uh, of course, the teenager, which would be Victoriana. Um, the ghost tour still uses the old names that they got from a psychic. So they call the little girl Victoria. Okay. And then the older one, Elizabeth. That all comes from a psychic, so it's not really necessarily accurate, okay. so to speak. But what's curious is I was in Old Town about two weeks ago, and uh, I, was, you know, I wanted to get some lunch before we were doing stuff, and I went into the Old Town Cafe. So I'm waiting for my sandwich, and I just asked them out of curiosity, is anything strange going on here? It's an old building. Yeah, there's a woman that calls our names. So it went from the initial... Okay, there's a woman we hear that calling our names to it's a guy that's calling our names, then back to a woman calling our names. Now, when you're looking at that investigatively, wait a minute, they're not experiencing the same things. It's changing. Right. So how much of that is due to the ghost stories being told? People are subjected to that. So you got that initial idea of what you think you're going to expect, and then it moves from that direction and expands on. I think part of it is, you know, sort of talking about that place and others is that what happens is, is that there tends to be, there, there's a self-perpetuating process, right, here right. because people go to, to haunted hotels, they, haunted B&Bs, haunted restaurants, and part of the reason they're there, not the only reason, part of the reason is because it's supposed to be haunted, right? right? right. Yep. So what happens? Well, in psychology, we call it uh, psychological priming or expected mm-hmm. attention. So if you tell people that you might see a, a, a ghostly figure down that hallway, well, they might see a ghostly figure right. down that hallway. Um, and again, it's, it, one thing that's interesting is that, you know, when I was researching the phenomenology of ghosts, that mm-hmm. is outside of, of folk tales, that is these sort of narratives that are, that are placed at a specific location. So as Cody was mentioning, oftentimes these ghosts, they're, they're stereotypes, right? They're, they're the mischievous young girl. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're the, uh, the the angry, jealous lover. There's mm-hmm. straight out of central casting, right? right, <laughs> right. The, and they're they're these stereotypes that people. They're the stories that we grew up with. They're they're the ones we're familiar with. Mm-hmm. So people plug those into these these narratives, um, and we come to expect that, right? The the jealous lover who killed his wife and this and that, and then we you know so all that's part of it. But then when we're getting, for example. Where I find find especially interesting is to sort of okay say okay well we can look at the folklore we can look at the legends we can look at the stories that's all well and good and I love these stories we both do we all do everyone right. loves these stories right. but part of me is to go beyond part of my interest is to go beyond folklore and say okay but is it also true mm-hmm. and this is where for example the ghosts uh, and the, the the ghost voices so you know the fact is that if it is true. Let's just say it's true that that people are that this this ghost George mm-hmm. really is mimicking the manager's voice mm-hmm. or mimicking like we should be able to record that mm-hmm. uh, and you know and and this is true throughout Old Town. I mean, there's lots of security cameras, lots of people have HD cameras all around. So if these things are actually going on, there's no reason in the world why security cameras or just cell phone or anything else shouldn't be recording these phenomena. On a weekly basis. Right, right. So I got two points uh-huh. that to go off what he went with. Um, the first one, I got really into reading a lot of parapsychology stuff, and you probably heard of this. They're, they're calling this stuff vertical hallucinations. Have you heard yeah, of that? I've, hmm. yes. So they're, what I, my understanding it correctly, they're saying it's happening in your head. It's not actually happening in the environment, which might explain why it's not filmed or whatever. Right. But the second thing, let me tell you a story, and, I, and, and kind of it explains a lot, okay? So when I first started doing tours in Old Town, um, there had to be a way for people to find me. So they dressed me up as a Ghostbuster. I'm serious. <laughs> I had a little pack. The pack was a CD player Which thing. one were you? Were you the uh, Ackroyd? Or? I, I was the, the Did, dumb one. <laughs> I don't know. It, I hated it. I hat. hated it because we, we went to Maria Teresa's back then. and people, uh-huh. Who are you going to call? Yelling out of the sure. car. Anyway. So I was doing a, this this tour for like 30 girls, right? And we go by that front window next to the front door. Mm-hmm. And this pack sucks because, A, the attachment that goes around your waist is really hard to get off. And the straps, I tried like putting washcloths around them to 
they sucked. They they would dig into just your, cut into your shoulders. You. Yeah. So by the end of the tour, and at this time we're doing La Placita last. Um, what was supposed to be, you know, a ninety minute thing. You know, it's Gilligan's Island. You know, a three hour <laughs> tour. But I'm there. My shoulders are killing me. I'm talking to them. I got to do the last story. So I pick the pack up and I sit on top of the bars that are on the window. Mm-hmm. And I'm sitting there talking to them, and all of a sudden, all of them scream and just jump back. You know, I wasn't expecting it, so it made me jump. Sure. And when I jumped, the pack slid behind those bars, pinning me to the window. <laughs> oh my gosh! Now, it took, I, I'll be honest, I freaked for like two seconds. But then Thinking like, that something had you. Something had got me, you know, and I, <laughs> I could feel the bars. Oh, okay. So now I'm trying to fumble with this thing to get it off. Well, by the time I got loose, whatever had happened, it happened. Yeah. And uh, half the group bailed. No tip. Just pew, they were gone. <laughs> the other that, half. That's an really easy done. way to get out of tipping. They're like, oh, my God, we're, run, run. <laughs> oh, I got to go. Bye. Yeah, no tip. Later. We'll give you five stars. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Uh, but the other half were excited, and I asked them what they saw, and they said they saw a little girl climbing up the window mm-hmm. behind me. I'm like, okay. So um, at that point, the Southwest Ghost Hunters was involved with the tours. Mm-hmm. And so we have a skeptic element. So I go, okay, well, this is what they, I didn't see it, but this is what they claim they saw. Mm-hmm. A couple of nights later, a couple of my skeptic friends were out there, and they're sitting in that park bench watching that window. It's like, there's got to be something. It, it, they said it was glowing. And they're like, it's got to be light. There has to be light reflecting. And so I sit down like, any luck? You figure anything out? And he's like, I don't know yet. And as we're talking, we see it. There's a truck driving down, and you see this thing going up the window. Mm. So what it is, and this is making an explanation, a very long explanation short. These were old windows. They were probably put in the 20s. Okay. So you're cleaning them. So you're taking this ammonia or whatever. Right. It's pain. So psh, 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 as you're spraying the stuff, and then you got to wipe it. Right. And you're doing that for decades. It stains the glass. So what happens when you get a high enough vehicle, like a truck, and the lights hit that window, it's actually going uphill. It slightly doesn't seem like it. But anytime you're coming from the river going east, you're going uphill. And it makes this really wild looking pattern on that glass, which is probably what they saw. Right. Now, the reason that's important is there's another story in my book. They're talking about an old town security guard. Uh And he turned and was, he saw what he said was a woman carrying a baby. Mm -hmm. But now that we know that the window was capable of producing this really weird effect, Mm -hmm. um, that might be an explanation for it. But we were able to replicate it, and I'm looking at it going, that's spooky as hell. Right. And so we did a a skeptical ghost tour once a month, and I had it on there because it was such a great example of how people can actually really see something that's weird Mm -hmm. and how that would play into the story. But uh, that stopped in 2005 when the owner's son decided he was going to freak out the tour group, and he hit the bottom pane of glass with his hand too hard. And it broke it, and then it just released the pressure on the window, and everything shattered oh and just gosh. went all over the tour guide. It just goes to show some of these stories might exist because they really do see something freaky right. that they don't understand. It's misperception of a normal thing. Right. And you would hit on something too, Ben, that I think may go into it, and that's priming an audience yeah. and, and telling them, you know, this is what's coming up. We hear all these stories. And so, you know, I know that that human beings, we try to find, you know, uh, relationships and patterns. And, you know, it's the same that sure, sure. you see, you know, why people think they see, you know, Mary in a tortilla or right. that you're looking for these patterns. And so if we're primed, oh, did you hear the story about this little girl? Well, then we see this run. Our brain is immediately, because we're primed, we're thinking, oh, that's what it is. I, I saw it. Yeah. I mean, in, in one of my books, uh, Scientific Paranormal Investigation, I talk about how it, you know, people throw around these these words like like Bigfoot or psychic or ghost, but it, it's it, from an investigative point of view, it's it's their best thought of as labels. Mm-hmm. They're labels for an anomalous experience, an experience they don't they don't, they can't explain right away. Because if you say, well, if you say I saw a ghost, what does that mean? With there, right. there is not agreement on what, what ghosts are, as, right. as he mentioned earlier. I mean, I've talked to ghost hunters who are who are absolutely certain that ghosts are. The, the spirits of the dead that have come back mm-hmm. because maybe they, they can't rest because their their deaths were unavenged. 
Other ghost hunters say, no, that's completely wrong. You've got this all wrong. Their ghosts are actually uh, the, the hallucinations. They we actually, they're projected by our minds into the world. Mm-hmm. Other people say, no, that's not right at all. Again, all these are ghost experts, right? right. And other ones are saying, no, 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 you, you guys are totally wrong. What is it? It's, it's called uh, residuals. Mm-hmm. Uh, basically, it's, yeah. a, it's the stone tape theory, this idea that where there is a, a, a murder or battleground that the, the anger and the pain and the tragedy seeped literally literally ish <laughs> seeped into the, the 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 trees and the stones and the ground yeah. and that these are then replayed and so but i'm like well hold on here like these can't all be describing the same thing right. so so even the experts can't agree on what ghosts are yeah. and so the point that i try when people ask me for advice on investigating the paranormal and ghost specifically i say look it, it helps to not is it, think of ghost as as a label for an experience. That is, someone someone saw something or heard something weird, and the best thing they can describe, it, it wasn't a Bigfoot, mm-hmm. it wasn't a psychic event, it wasn't a UFO, it, the closest thing is what people think of as a ghost, so so it's that label. Moving on to the next location, uh, and you would kind of mention this idea of a residual haunting, that something so horrible has happened. You know, I think of Gettysburg, mm-hmm. and a lot of people think of, you know, that Gettysburg is very haunted. Obviously, that, that area of the United States saw tremendous tragedy. We have seen it here in New Mexico, mm-hmm. but specifically with La Hacienda, um, I know that there was, at least in, in the stories that were told on the ghost tour, that there was a murder that happened outside uh, of the building. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a, a waitress, if, if I remember correctly, that a, a jealous boyfriend. Yeah, they, they were saying it's a woman named Mary. So, continuing researching, mm-hmm. I did find out that actually it happened. It happened in 1985. Okay. The name is wrong. Okay. And, like, oh, okay. I'm just writing down what they're telling me. You know, they, mm-hmm. we think it might be this person, right? Or, but I, like, oh, I found it, and I said, okay, I want to do a blog post on it. So I think the name of the blog post is Uncovering Haunted Secrets in Old Town. Mm-hmm. So I put it in there, and the name's wrong. Some of the details of it are wrong. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not by the tree. It was actually a little bit more over. Okay. But here's the thing. Uh, I got contacted by the family. Really? And they were like, well, thanks for telling the truth because, you know, it's like, how do you guys feel about it? Because it, that's your relative right. that they're talking about. This was a real about. person. And they're all, and today I was walking by a couple, again, a couple weeks ago after the, the old town thing. And they're like, Mary, can you please communicate? And I'm looking at it now going, that's just really disrespectful. Mm-hmm. And so I actually have a, I put a request in with my editor to edit. Okay. Um, edit the story. Of, yeah, because now that I know it's not just folklore or story, which a lot of times it is, but it's a real thing. Right. And it's not related because if you look at the history, the hauntings are earlier than that. So it has okay. nothing to do with it. Okay. So it's like, you know, I'd like to take that out and correct a couple other things that I've found over time that have been wrong. Some of them are history bits, but that's the way we are. We learn, we, you know, as we sure. continue on. But um, yeah, so it's, that's one of the ones of, I don't think it's related at all to anything. It was just something that someone thought because they were having experiences in the gift shop. They knew they heard of that, Mm -hmm. but the information that was put out was wrong. But now that we know that it was tragic and not that long ago, Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't do it if I was doing the tour. And I'm really, I would do, want to pick up on what, what Cody said, because I think that's that's a really important and often overlooked aspect of ghost hunting is that in a lot of cases, not all, in some some cases, there's no evidence at all that anything ever happened. It, right. It's just sort of the folklore and the legend and the psychic comes in and says something that nobody can verify. Mm-hmm. But in some cases, Cody's right, they're like, that people have died there. Right, there's verifiable evidence. There's verifiable evidence. Um, and one case uh, that's actually not too far, I'll, I'll just, I won't go into the whole story because it's a complicated one, but is the, the chemo theater. And I did an investigation at the chemo theater many years ago. The story, I won't, again, I won't go into the whole story. Basically, it was said to be haunted by a, 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 the ghost of a boy named Bobby Darnall, mm-hmm. who who had died. Uh, he, he didn't die at the theater. He act, There was a, a, an explosion at the theater. Mm-hmm. Um, and he died on his way to the hospital. Uh, but to this day, people say that if you don't leave donuts or other things for him, that he will ruin the performance and, and do bad things to you. And when I published my research on this, I actually got an email from Bobby Darnell's sister, and she thanked me for 
She's like, it feels weird to have people talking about my dead brother who died, I think, in 1952 or one or something. It's like, you know, Bobby's not haunting the theater. I was like, I know you guys enjoy your ghost lore, and I'm not trying to bring the house down, but she's like, you know, so so she was thanking me for sort of telling the true story about it and and showing that Bobby almost certainly didn't didn't die there. Right. Uh, And he has no connection to the the ghostly hauntings. Spoiler. But that's but that's you bring up a really good point, too, because, I mean, it's it's been used. You know, that story has been used. So, I mean, I've taken the ghost tour a number of times and every time that's one of the locations you stop at the tree behind La Hacienda. They tell that story. Um, what were some of the other stories that were going uh, on at Lost? Most of them were, they think it's Sophia Bueller, who was you know, the wife of the man that built it. Okay. Um, a lot of the stories, there's one that I was interviewing one of the managers. We were upstairs and you could hear music mm-hmm. and it sounded like, you know, just normal music, right? And he's like, that's weird. That sounds like it comes in from downstairs. Like, did you turn the, you know, they have the, the speakers to play the music while you're dying. Sure. Like, sure. He's like, that's off. I don't know what the heck that is. So we went downstairs and there's nothing. Went back upstairs, we could hear it. Like, you sure there's nothing up here? It's like, no, it's all downstairs. So I opened the window and I'm listening out, maybe some from outside's coming in and you could still hear it. So that was probably like the strangest, we'll call it. Yeah. But even with that, uh, there's also stories of uh, the women's bathroom. I think probably one of the favorite ones because it's kind of funny. Uh, women went in to use the restroom and she said a hand, you know, came underneath to give her toilet paper and she thanked you and then but she was the only woman in the building so she freaked out sure. but you know there's all, all kinds of little stories like that but uh the oldest one was recorded by the wpa and it okay. was a woman named francis and this is in an interview uh she said she came in to the building first one inside and there was a cup of coffee on a table and she went and she picked it up but the cup was hot like it's fresh coffee. Mm. And so she puts it down and goes, oh, the cook must have beat me here. So she went back to look for him. Well, here he comes in the front door. He just got there. So it was like, who made the dun, coffee? Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> you know. So it's like little stuff like that. Like, why would the ghosts make real coffee? That's right. not like they could drink it. You know, they sound like really helpful ghosts. I mean, yeah. and in your toilet paper. I would like uh, a ghost and maybe yeah, give me toilet paper and coffee. Uh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's cool. You know, maybe they can go down and get the mail while but they're you see at how it. These you know, take the garbage. You out. get all these little tales, and then you start as the story is going from one person to another, they become more spooky, right. and you start adding more details, and then next thing you know, you got this full blown. Oh, it's so. Sophia Bueller. Well, why is she haunting it? Because she died. And, you know, it, you know, you know like, why? That's not There's a good no enough reason, reason in my yeah. book. I, right. There's know, nothing tragic Come on. that happens there. Right. right. But it's an old building, and, it, you know, it has a kind of a, a neat little past to it. Well, I think the other thing to keep in mind is that when we're talking about Old Town specifically, uh, it's a beautiful area, historic. Mm. It's just cool. I mean, I've yeah. lived here most of my life. I still enjoy walking around. Oh, yeah, it's like great. All sorts of stuff. But there's a couple things about it, right? So as Cody mentioned, as you talked about, it has this rich history. You, you can see it. It's 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 You can literally see the history, right? Mm-hmm. The, but there's a couple things. One, of course, is it's even the name, old. Mm-hmm. Well, you can see where I'm going with this. What What is the characteristic of old buildings? Uh, wonky electricity. Mm-hmm. I know this for a fact. Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, sure. Settling, uh, timbers, uh, adobe. Um, um, mice, rats, uh, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not, not calling out any health department code <laughs> violations, <laughs> but the fact is that old buildings, by definition, by their nature, tend to be, uh, they have things go wrong. And the other thing is, you know, Cody's mentioning the, the sound, where well, you have sounds coming. Well, Old Town is pretty densely packed. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of businesses, a lot of buildings, a lot of people coming and going. And so it's not like these are isolated Areas right, right. so like, there's one house. Like if you if you're hearing something in a place, there's lots of possible places. Even if there's no one else in the building, they don't mean nothing. Right, <laughs> I, right. I got the source street. could be very close, and it's you, and then Dolby walls are a good buffer. It could have been coming from the other side. For exactly, all we knew. Yeah. exactly. You know, so it's just that's one of those things. But if you're not really investigating, you're just right. there with somebody. Oh, that's freaky. Yeah. You're not going to go and do the extra steps to check. Right. So it becomes a freaky experience, right. which is then passed to somebody uh, who writes a book about it. Yeah. <laughs> and then it gets in the hands of, you know, tour people who are then repeating the And then the they story. repeat it and they yeah. tell the and story they, in folklore. And they add more. And right. Yeah. So... Well, and, and you also, and this will kind of take us to our, our last location, and I, I saved it for last because it's one of my personal favorites, um, partly because they make 
amazing Pasoli, um, Church Street Cafe. Um, that was a repurposed building. Uh, mm-hmm. And um, I, I know that's, I'm more familiar with that story. Maybe it's because I frequent it because of their Pasoli. It's amazing. Um, but what, what is the story about Church Street Cafe? Uh, so the current owner, um, still alive, Marie Coleman, uh, she bought it, it was just a house. And she thought it would I'd be really cool to fix up this place. But uh, she was talked in by her son to make it into a restaurant. So it's, it's expanded. So a lot of it is addition, all that beautiful garden and everything. That's all modern stuff. Mm-hmm. And she said when the construction started, there, she had a workman who would come up to her and like, you tell that woman to stop. Mm-hmm. She's chucking buckets around. She's making this job hell. Like, who? And he said it it was a ghost, and she believes it is the ghost of um, a woman named Sarah Ruiz, who was the last living member of the family. They got a lot of weird traditions there, like supposedly if you don't sell, tell Sarah goodnight when you're leaving, she'll turn the lights on behind you. Ben already brought that up, wonky electricity. Uh-huh. But it, there's that, that whole concept of it's old, there's stories, and then it just expanded. But the strangest thing, and I... I this is where I need him because this is the one thing <laughs> I can't. I'm on fi- the spot now. I, I can't figure this out, and I, I want some more. I need help. Okay. <laughs> I've and, often said that about you, Cody. With all due respect, <laughs> yes, yes. Um, so we were doing weird travels, and they filmed this, um, and we we went to this you know, like a hotel, and we did the interviews, and we found out they were doing the reenactment thing. And we're like, let's go check that out. That would be cool. So we were back on the back patio. It was me, Bob, and Julia, who's running the tours now. And uh, so Bob, we knew Marie well. So mm-hmm. Bob, his Dr. Pepper got empty, so he could go back and fill it himself. They're not going to say anything. So he gets up to do that. Um, he's gone 30 seconds, and he comes running up to me. Dude, go to the car, get this and this and this. And I'm like, what? what's going on, Bob? And he turns and runs away. Like, I'm not going to go to the car. I want to go in and see what the hell is going on. Right. And then there's that one room that goes the length of the ho- the building. Mm-hmm. Uh, that main I, dining room. Right? That main uh-huh. dining room, the old du- part of the building. And I got in there, and there's like probably 12, 15 people or so all against the walls and there's silverware all over the floors and i'm like what the heck and he's yeah they said you know it's like an invisible force going from table to table swiping the silverware off wow. and down at the end was a really <laughs> off channel channel cameraman who had just powered his camera down so he oh didn't gosh. get it on film i talked to the people they all said this happened but the big story was they were supposedly reenacting a knife fight between Sarah and her lover. This would be Rafinha's father. Okay. And it ended up with him leaving. And according to Marie, Ghost doesn't like it when we talk about that. And they were about to reenact it, and that's when this supposedly happened. Really? Okay. So that's the one. Unth- I, how in the hell does Civil War move by itself, Ben? Yeah. I was not there, just to be crystal clear. Neither was I. Neither Um, was I. (laughs) Well, uh, look, I've been on on ghost hunting TV shows when there was fakery. I'll just leave it at that to avoid any legal... Issues. Yeah, I, uh, I would. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'd love to. I'd love to see it. You know, it, it's interesting. You talked about sort of like you, that. The, there's there's often time that in ghost lore they're like, like, don't do X, right? Because the ghost and like you know, in the right. case of the chemo theater, it's you have to leave something for Bobby, otherwise something bad will happen. Or if you don't, in that case, you know, if you don't say good night uh, to, to to Sarah, then um, then either uh, either the lights will come on or off mm-hmm. or else. And so I, and it, it's this sort of classic ghost lore. Again, is sort of like uh, appeasing the spirits, right? Mm-hmm. So you would, you know, you light a candle for somebody. You do all these sorts of different things. And I'll tell you one quick story. So I'm, I, I've been to the church many, many times. I, mm-hmm. I, I, I love Carney out of Vada, so Okay. I'm, you know, <laughs> it's a sl- slightly different angle into it. Yeah. But I remember one time um, I was, I was, I was t- tagging on one of the ghost hunting tours. It wasn't one you were on, but it was, it was uh, a couple years back. And, and it's one of those cases where I actually happen to know a lot about it. I'm, I'm not going to cause a stir. I'm not there to cut. I'm just, you know, I'm just, sure. they were friends. Where else? And so we stopped in front of the, the, the cafe and they told all the stories and that the pebbles, you know, the, the pink granite will be mm-hmm. tossed us and that. And, and then they all left. And I noticed that there was a waiter who was uh, counting, uh, counting cash. Of course, I worked in many restaurants. So I, I was familiar with that. So he's sitting there counting cash and he, he was, there the whole time it was they had just closed. All right, I guess he got early off his shift, so the 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 tour goes on, and and he's sitting there and I'm like, well, this is a good chance to actually talk to somebody. I mean, 
So I wasn't doing a full investigation. I was just tagging along. I said, so um, you work here? I was like, yeah. I was like, yeah, I haven't worked here for, I think, I think it's three or four years. I said, so do you, do you say goodnight to Sarah? And he looked and says, well, she never says goodnight to me. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just funny that it was just, I mean, he clearly did not believe sure. in the ghost at all. Sure. And it was interesting because again, you, we had we had this group of people who were following this tour and I'm thinking there's someone who, who works, that, that he, that there's somebody who knows this because they spend their time here. Right. Ask that dude, because he works here. I right. mean, again, not, not to rain on the prey to the tour, but as an investigator, I'm like, the story is cool, but let's talk to somebody who's actually there. Sure. And the guy's like, yeah, dude, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and it also, you know, it, it always seems to me, too, that, and you bring it up, and again, not knowing exactly what happened, but, oh, the camera was off. Oh, the camera's right. in the truck. Oh, I didn't have right. the, it's always right. like. It's always just. That's my, that's you my shoot doom. TV I for always, a living. <laughs> that's what you I do, always, dude. it's, I don't see it. I'm there after. <laughs> right. In fact, uh, the, a few weeks ago. Um, so New Mexico PBS is going mm -hmm. to do something about the ghosts of old town and they were doing the reenactment part. And so mm -hmm. I went with them and, um, they were doing the reenactment stuff in the, uh, old town cafe. Uh -huh. So the far end of north end of La Placida. And they were like, well, we're running behind cause it's take, you know how it is. Sure. Take, 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 take. Sure. So, okay. I'll run to church street. Let Marie know you guys are running late. So I left. So they did their thing and the. Actress is changing in the bathroom. Two of the cameramen are changing in the bathroom, leaving one guy alone. And they hear this big crash. And so they, okay, everybody runs out because there was no one there from the business. They literally gave New Mexico PBS the key. Oh my gosh. And okay. trusted them to lock it up. So I looked around, there's nothing wrong. Well, the camera guys went out and they said there was a couple standing outside looking in the window watching some of what they were doing. I said, well, what are you guys doing? Oh, we're just, we're just doing a documentary thing. You know, they didn't go into detail. They, oh, yeah, the little girl was really cute. And then they turned around and walked. And so they ran, of course, to me. Oh, my God. We just, there was a little girl showed up. And I'm like, well, I wasn't there again. <laughs> but it's like if I would have been, the first question would have been, are you local? Uh -huh. Right. Do they right. know the ghost stories? Are they messing with the camera crew? Right. Because it would be obvious what we were filming. Right. Um, as we wrap things up here, um, if, if people listening to this, my, my hope is that they, they get excited to just go to Old Town and, you know, maybe patronize these businesses, eat there, maybe do a little bit. Any advice if someone out there, because again, you know, we're, we, we've kind of talked at this from a sort of an analytical uh, Well, you got us, area. of course, you're going to get that. <laughs> <laughs> but if someone out there is like, you know what? No, you guys don't know what you're talking about. I believe in ghosts. These are real. What advice would you give someone if they want to go out and they kind of want to experience this themselves to just have a good time? Um, but, you know, like if you're going to go out and ghost tour, do blank. What would you do to fill in that blank? I enjoy the ghost stories, but like I've, I've said, you know, take it with a grain of salt. Yeah. Uh, we do not know how they change over time as the stories being passed from person to person. So you might be hearing something, Eric, you might not be hearing anything accurate. Um, but yeah, just take them for what it is. It's just a story. I have no problem with ghost hunting groups as long as it's entertainment. Mm -hmm. Where I have a problem is they say, we're scientific. You're not. Mm -hmm. When we got evidence, no, it's not. Mm -hmm. um, just be honest mm -hmm. about what you're doing. Having fun, good time. Just enjoy it. Then what about you? Yeah, I would. I I, I echo everything that Cody just said. Um, yeah, go enjoy it for what it is. Don't assume that the uh, the ghost hunters tour is telling you the true stuff. I, they're not necessarily lying. You're, you're paying to be entertained. Right. That's why you're there. Right. So yeah. so if you're wanting the if you're wanting the true story behind it, uh, Cody's written books. I've written books about it, this and that. By the way, if you're going to be going to Old Town, go to Treasure House. Yes. Small okay. in, local independent bookstore where you can buy where you can find books by both of us. Yes. Oh uh, yeah, and just enjoy. Be be in the moment. Put away your cell phones. Uh, just be in the moment. Get the hackles. Get the mm -hmm. get the scary. Get the spooks. But don't assume that what you're hearing is necessarily true. Right. 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 Well, guys, thank you so much for being uh, a part of this. Happy Halloween to you. Best of luck on your endeavors. Guys uh, watching, thank you for joining us on this inaugural episode of New Mexico Strange. Uh, keep up to date with us here at krqe.com and on our YouTube channel, and we will see you next time.